Okay. So hello everyone. My name is Maciej Dobrzański, and I'll be uh, talking about character encoding in MySQL, about uh, how you break and then maybe fix your data that it was incorrectly encoded and stored. Um, okay, so let's start. So um, we view documents as lines of text, but computers have to see that data, see that information as, as binary data. And so characters become numeric values, numeric codes, and these codes become character encoding, where a letter becomes a number. Um, there are two most popular encoding types, which is ASCII, obviously, and, and Unicode. A collection of um, certain uh, characters encoded in a certain way becomes a character set, which could be for a language like Latin 1 or Latin US, which covers US English, or English in general. Uh, Latin 1, which covers most of European languages that do not really need all fancy characters of Latin 2. Also, you'll have, multi, uh, the, you'll have characters that use Unicode encoding, which can be multi-byte encoding, where a character takes from one to four bytes. And these could be more complex character sets, like Asian languages or um, pretty much anything these days. Uh, so character set is the context that sort of defines what each character code means and what it becomes when it's printed on the screen, on the printer, or whatever. So uh, when the context is lost, we no longer can tell what a specific code means. What is 65? Is it A? Is it a question mark? Is it an ex ex um, exclamation mark? We don't know that. So the character set defines that for us. Um, if we mix up the character set, then we are most likely unable to figure it out anymore. So what can go wrong or when can things go wrong? So uh, this session is about breaking and fixing character encoding. So encoding is maintained on multiple levels from the presentation layer, like a web page or a um, so terminal, terminal or anything else, a screen, uh, down to the data storage. So tables, columns, and so on. This offers flex this multi-level layer support uh, offers flexibility in how this is uh, how we can access information, how we can display information and store information. But it also creates complexity. This is flexibility, but it also creates com complexity that often leads to problems. Over in the next few examples, I'll show you what these problems can be, how, how they occur, and, and later how to fix some of those. So problem number one is, and this is in MySQL specifically, is that MySQL by default is what Latin one. So its default character encoding is Latin one. When you install it out of the box, this is what it will be using. And this also applies to the upcoming MySQL 5.7, I think. And well, most people these days don't bother really looking at that because they generally will assume that, well, okay, it's a tool I need to use. So it will support um, um, correct, it, it, will sub, it will be multilingual. It will support whatever I want to store or read from it, right? It's 2015. So people don't really look at that too often. So we kind of will start following this process of building applications. So we start with a clean MySQL and a new application. Both server and client use Latin 1 by default for no reason, so we create a schema. And we create a first table to support our application that will store, that will allow users to store uh, the places where they live. So we have all these people coming in, they, uh, okay. Uh, and then of course, when we create this table, the server uses the default encoding for this table, it says Latin one. So we have a new table that will use Latin one, of course. So we have this application where people come in and add their cities. 
and so we someone from Germany, someone from Poland, and then there's this guy from Japan who, what I believe should be, tries to uh, enter Tokyo using his own uh, letters. So he hits save and voila, uh, it's, it's great, it works, right? Everything displays correctly. So the problem is that we created a table that is Latin one, and Latin one doesn't really support Japanese characters, it's not in the, in Latin, it's not in the character set. These characters are outside of this character set. But, you know, it works, so we are probably fine, right? Well, actually, we're not fine. So what MySQL does when it sees a client and a data, it looks at the character uh, set that they use. If the character sets are different on both ends, it will try to perform an uh, on-the-fly conversion so that the client gets information in the character set it wants. So we set character set to UTF because, well, we expect input from all around the world in different languages. So we set this in UTF and MySQL converts our uh, cities into garbage. Uh, so it is definitely not right, right? Interestingly, if we set this to Latin one, we got all the right things. So, well, the data is kind of correct, but in a kind of weird way. So, is it a problem? Well, I guess you can live with that. Well, application works, it's fine, so you can use it, and there appear to be no problems, but there may be such time where something goes wrong. So, for example, you'll try to upgrade Ruby, and then all the Ruby will work with that, and the new Ruby will tell you, okay, but this Japanese character doesn't really make sense in Latin one, so I won't, I won't get this data for you. So this is where the place where you need to start thinking, okay, I need to, I need to fix this, right? So you start fixing, fixing it. So you update the server encoding, you set the client encoding right, you convert data, tables, and whatnot, and obviously you get a table that is now, that is now done correctly. It uses correct. Unicode encoding. So the good news is it's sometimes uh, fixable. You can fix the encoding without losing anything or breaking anything. So then we move to kind of problem number two. So I said that encoding or character sets are handled on multiple levels. So in MySQL you have, um, what, five different settings alone to define what, what's going on with, uh, with, with data, how it's translated, how it's encoded, and, and how it's converted. You'll also have s schema level defaults, table level defaults, and of, and of course column character sets which define the actual storage uh, character set, so how the data is stored in the tables. So we fixed our first problem, right? We converted data back into, I mean, sorry, we converted it into UTF, so it's now done correctly. Uh, and we continue to develop our application. So we add new functionality that is, uh, we allow people to add their names, right? So we create a new, a new table, uh, and well, we start our application. So there were two guys who already added their names, and I decided to mine as well, and I click save, and then, oh, and then I have a question mark in the middle of my name. So. We fixed the problem, but apparently something is still wrong. So we go, we log in, we see that our settings are generally correct, but we look at the table and it's Latin one for no reason. So um, why? Well, we started investigating uh, configuration and we see this character set database that is Latin one. Um, why is it? Well, because when we first created the database, we had the server running with Latin one default encoding. So the database got its own schema level uh, character set set to Latin one, and we've never fixed that. We converted data, we converted tables. That was fine, but all new tables that we kept creating later were receiving this old encoding associated with a schema. So can we fix this problem? Well. We start digging, and it turns out that 
my accented N in the last name became a question mark and it permanently became a question mark. So at this point, there is no going back. I mean, we only have data that has a question mark. My name will always have a question mark in it. If you know my name, you can fix it, but you will not know all the answers for all the rows in all tables. So essentially, this means that this data is broken beyond repair for one silly reason. So it may not be enough to set up server correctly. You have to be way more careful with that. Also, it's even more, da more dangerous if you get difference between the server and client encoding because of the implicit conversions that I mentioned before. So going back to this, this um, all these different settings that you can do in MySQL. So the reason that it happened, that the, pro the second problem happened was that uh, schema level defaults, they affect new tables. And table level defaults affect new columns. So what you see in the table definition as a default character set will only be affecting any new column that you add without specifying the character set. And what you see in the schema definition will apply to any new table that you create without the default character set uh, specified explicitly. So um, we have some more examples of that. So we have this, we create, we create this schema. We have a server that runs Latin one and our client uses UTF-8, right? So we create a schema and the schema receives the server's default encoding, which is Latin one, regardless of our client setting. So then we go into the schema and we create a table. A table will obviously receive the schema's default encoding, which is also Latin one. Um, once, um, yeah, so then we change the default schema, uh, default character set for this new table to UTF-8, right? And what it turns out is our column suddenly is still character set Latin one. This is not displayed here because the column character set matches the table's default character set. But as soon as there is a difference, the column has this additional text say, stating that it's a default encoding that uh, the table's default encoding. So this is what can happen. So changing table's character set to something else doesn't really fix the problem because column remains as uh, Latin one, it's, it's kind of set independently. So then we can add a new column to this, new, to this table, which is already UTF. So you can see that the new column has no character set mentioned in this, in this, uh, in this output, which means it is UTF-8. It is the same as the default encoding for this table. So essentially, when this happens, when you have all these problems with characters, when you have like lat UTF data stored in Latin one tables, what you can do? Well, first, it's important that you don't do uh, that you don't act too quickly. You have to analyze the situation, figure out what happened, why it happened, then reassess the damage. Figure out if the problems are consistent, if all data is broken in the same day, way, are some tables broken in a different way, or maybe they are broken, broken in a several different ways. So each case has to be handled differently, so you have to know that. You have to also figure out if data is repairable. Sometimes it's not. So what you shouldn't be doing? Well, you shouldn't act too quickly because you can actually break things even more. You can't fix this on a replication slave because replication will, if you start converting data on replication slave, replication will continue to send you bad data. Replication carries character set information and encoding. Uh, you can't really fix this one by one, uh, the table, tables one by one because this change in the application or server has to be sort of atomic. So if you switch from Latin one to UTF-8, it, it affects all tables on all communication. So you can't really do that. It has to be in sort of one go. And you don't want to use these if you have a broken a character set encoding anywhere because these generally assume that everything is okay. They will convert data, or the last two at least, but only under assumption that everything is right. So what needs to be fixed? Schema, uh, default character, set, like I mentioned, 
uh, all, the all the text columns in the database. Also enum, which, doesn't, which isn't really a text column, but it carries some text information. You can grab all these columns, all these tables from the information schema. Other tables that do not have text information in them, you should eventually fix as well. They won't be affected by the existing problems, but you may want to add uh, new columns to those tables later. And if they are Latin 1 instead of UTF, you will get Latin 1 columns again. So what are your options? Well, you can do dump and restore. If you just tell MySQL dump to use the same encoding as the data, uh, as, the tables, uh, as the tables use, so you use Latin 1 to dump uh, from a Latin 1 tables, this will s keep the implicit conversion and will, for example, export the UTF data correctly. Then you recreate everything, edit the MySQL dump to uh, update table definitions and import everything else, everything as UTF into the server again. The other option is to use alter table and convert each column separately by converting them into binary form and then back into UTF. Convert converting the column data or table data into binary uh, encoding means that basically you drop the characters at context. So there is no conversion applied either way. So this way you can kind of having US uh, UTF data in a Latin one table, you get uh, you get it into a binary form without any changes and then you get to UTF without any changes as well. So it's correct. And the last option that we developed recently is to use PT online schema change to do this online without pretty much any downtime. So we wrote a plugin that we used with a PT online schema change and a slight modification of the PT online schema change to actually let it work. Uh, that works like PT online schema change. So you can perform your conversion online the only kind of requirement is that you don't rotate your tables as they are converted. So you end up with a database that is twice as large with all the tables having both new and old uh, versions. And then when everything is converted, you start your application, you fix your, your broken configs and, and everything, and then you rotate the tables. You basically replace the Latin one tables or with UTF tables, for example. So the downtime could be less than a minute. There could be a few gotchas, which is if you convert from Latin 1 to UTF, uh, your storage requirements may increase. So um, you, could, you, you may need to increase the uh, column length or, in, or change the index length to accommodate the new requirements. Uh, also, there could be more problems than you think. So this function can, te uh, can test if the conversion worked, so you can compare all pre-conversion value with a post-conversion value and te test if it actually worked correctly in an automated, automated way, so you can apply it on all data in the database. Um, so how to do it right? Set the character set during initial configuration. Always explicitly specify car the full col character set for everything, including tables, columns, and uh, schemas. And of course, don't forget to don't forget to set up your applications correctly as well. Okay, and one more thing which is not related to that. If you're interested in web, web scale SQL, we are sharing this with everyone. We've been using this and building binary packages for them for a while. So we are not sharing, now sharing them, the web scale SQL packages with you, which is, and you can grab them and test them the amazing web, web scale SQL from Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, Google, and others. Um, like me. Any questions? Sorry? Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's all?